Hi there, it's Gabriele here from PulseClimb.com and in today's video we're gonna talk about DME procedures and ARC. By the end of this video, you know, you will know how do we use the DME during flight operations, what the DME ARCs are and how to read a DME ARC chart. Without further ado, let's dive into it. So DME and flight operations. So as you can see here from this slide, we've got a picture here on the left and a picture here on the right. The picture here on the left is a, a, an extract from a departure procedures out of an airport south of Italy, where basically shows us that these, the black lines, are the routes that the uh, airplane flying under the IFR rules they have to follow in order to leave the airport. So as you can see here, we've got this black line that goes from here, from the airport, this square, this re black rectangular is the airport, and then basically what the aircraft has to do is to from this black line all the way down to this triangle, and then from this triangle down left. So this triangle is a waypoint, but what is this waypoint? If we follow this line here, it tells us that the waypoint is called index. So what happens is that the aircraft has to fly all the way down to index and then perform a left turn. But the problem is, how do we uh, actually uh, see where index is on board of the airplanes? So as you can see, we've got D, that means distance, 11, Charlie Tango Foxtrot. So that means that this index is at 11 nautical miles away from Charlie Tango Foxtrot. What is, where is Charlie Tango Foxtrot? If we see here, as we talked in the previous video about the DME, normally the DME are co-located with the airports. As you can see, the rectangular is the airport. In these triangles, if you follow it, this triangle, if you follow the black line, we found out that this Charlie Tango Fox dot is 116.25 and is the, D, the DME frequency. We talked yesterday about the importance of having the right DME frequency. If you haven't watched the video, I strongly recommend you to do so. So, now, as you can see here, this is a DME, so 11 miles from this DME here, we've got index point. So the pilot knows that if they leave the airport at zero, on the 077 radar from the VOR and they fly all the way down to 11 nautical miles along this 077, what will happen that once they read 11 nautical miles, that is exactly the index point. And from there on, they can turn left. It's an example that shows us that during the departure, uh, how do we use DME during the departure. On the right side here, you can see an extract, another extract is a small part of a approach chart that we will see later, and uh, where basically show us uh, the importance of having a DME and the right DME on board. So what happened is that, uh, let's imagine an aircraft, this is the runway again, and let's imagine an aircraft is flying from here and it, it wants to land, so he has to follow this descending path, okay? The, all these are minimum altitude so the, that aircraft has to respect in order to be clear of obstacles. But how do we know where uh, where we can descend below this minimum altitude? So for example here we've got 3500 feet is the minimum altitude for the, airport, for the airplane that uh, uh, is flying from here and then if once you reach the 13 nautical miles from the BEG Bergamo VOR in this case which is co-located with the airport it can actually fly down to a minimum of 2,800 feet, all the way down to the 7 nautical miles point. Then from the 7 nautical miles point, it can continue descending. So as you can see, it's very important to know uh, the DME distances in order to make sure that you will never bust, you will never go lower this altitude. Because let's imagine that we didn't have the DME, we didn't know when we could descend from 3,500 down to 2,800 uh, feet. So as you can see here as well, from 3,500, it's gonna give us a it's gonna give us a breakdown of the altitude in order to make sure that we are at the right altitude at the right distance. So, for example, 9.1 nautical miles from the Bravo Echo Golf DME, we need to be at 3,500 feet. At 8 nautical miles from Bravo Echo Golf uh, DME, we need to be 3,150. So, what happens that the pilots once they're flying. Uh, uh, into the approach, we'll get this. Uh, uh, they will check it out when they are eight nautical miles, and they check out their altitude. If they are at three thousand one hundred fifty feet, that means they are perfectly in profile. If they are four thousand feet, that means they are very high. And if they are two thousand feet, that means that they are low. So once they pass the eight miles, they go down. They check the seven miles point. They see their altitude, and they should be around 2,820 2, feet, and so on, all the way down until they see the actual puppies. Okay, so let's move on. So what is 
a DME arc. Now we saw how we normally use the DME during straight operations, so when we are going outbound for something or inbound on something, we can use the DME in order to see where a waypoint is or in order to see when we can go down, but there are another procedure that is very, very uh, commonly used in the IFR, IFR operations and, are the, and these are the DME arcs. So we've got DME arcs for departures, DME arcs for arrivals and DME arcs for approaches. So if we take here on the left we've got an, uh, a NAFTEC chart of a uh, departure procedure, here is an, a NAFTEC chart for an uh, arrival procedure and here is an, a NAFTEC chart for an approach procedure. So what's the difference? Well, as you, as you can see, read here is a SID, means standard instrument departure, means that this is a, a chart that the FR flight has to follow in order to leave the airport. So once they take off, they follow this route, they fly, they go on route, then once they arrive on route, before landing, they have to follow this arrival chart that basically allows the pilot to uh, uh, change from the en route phase to the arrival phase and once they get very close to the airport they have to change from the arrival phase to the approach phase in order to land the plane. So the IFR pilots they have to fly and follow these standard routes. These standard routes normally they can be into straight line into the airport or, can, or they can have uh, these DME arcs. So you see the DME arc, we've got one DME arc here because it's a arc this long DME arc here, and then we've got this DME arc here as well. So now what we're going to do, we're going to basically review and check all these charts and see how it works. So let's see the first one. All right, the first one is the DME arc on arrival plate. Okay, so let's say, for example, how can we read this? Okay, so as you can see here, we've got this an arc, okay? But this is an arc that takes uh, as a point of uh, referment, that takes as a reference a uh, DME, because it's a DME arc. The DME, as you can see here, is D30, that means the distance 30 from Papa Alpha Lima. All right? So the Papa Alpha Lima is the DME that is taking as a reference in order to build up this arc. Where is Papa Alpha Lima? So as you can see, this is an arc normally, if you go on the center of this arc, you will find out that we've got Papa Alpha Lima the 112 decimal 3. That means that 112 decimal 3 is the DME frequency for this DME arc. So this is a 30 nautical miles arc around the Papa Alpha Lima uh, DME. Okay, so now let's see how can we fly it. We know already the frequency, so which is 112 decimal 3 Papa Alpha Lima. So what happened? Once we arrive here from uh, in this, po this point here, Jano, an aircraft flies all the way down on this radial 3 to 3, all the way down to the distant 34 nautical miles from Papa Alpha Lima. So, as you can see here, the pilots are using again the DME to find out where a waypoint is. So, once they have reached the 34 nautical miles Papa Alpha Lima on this radial of the radial from, from the Papa Alpha Lima VOR, because here we've got a DME, VR DME that is collocated, the pilots will turn left in order to intercept and follow the 30 DME arc from Papa Alpha Lima. Okay, so it's gonna, the pilot's gonna fly all the way, it's gonna cross these waypoints here, and then it's gonna fly all the way down, and then we've got this radial 028. You see, this radial 028 is very important because it's also called a living radial. So the living radial means that from here we've got a radial, so you have to imagine like uh, as a radial that crosses the DME arc, that tells us when the pilots read that they are in this distance and at this rate that they can turn turn right and leave the DME arc. It's extremely important to know your living radial because once you cross that radial you have to turn in order to leave the DME arc because if you continue a constant turn you will fly around the DME but at some point you need to go inbound the airport. So once you cross the, DME, the living radial you can actually make a, a bigger turn and go inbound the airport. Okay so as we were saying here now we know how to read this DME arc, how to find out where the frequency is, but there are a lot more information that we need to see and check along uh, uh, the DME arc. As you can see here, from the distance 34, as we said, the pilot will turn left and flies the, DME, the 30 nautical miles DME arc. As you can see here, we've got a, 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 we've got a 5000, which is the minimum altitude that the, arc, that the pilot has to respect. So from here, all the way down to this waypoint, the pilot has to be 5,000 feet or above. 
Okay, so how do we find out that we actually are in this segment if the if if the distance is constant? Like in the previous example, we knew that we were in that segment because the distance, because of the distance. So we knew that at 34 nautical miles we have this altitude restriction, then we could go down until 30 miles, then we could go then we could go down past the 30 miles point, go down until 25 nautical miles point, for example. But in this case, since the DME distance is constant, how can we know that we can leave 5,000 to descend 4,000, for example? As you can see here, we've got this waypoint, okay? And this is a radial. So 00, uh, 001 is the radial that allows us to descend from 5,000 to 4,000. So in the DME arc, what we are using, since the distance is constant, we're using the, the radius from the VOR as a references. So once we cross this radial, we can go down to 4,000. So how the, how the pilot is flying it, basically, is checking that the 30 miles is constant and then that the radials are uh, changing. So once, if you, if you fly at constant distance and then you see that here you have 34, uh, 354 radial, this is going to have 355, 356, 360, and then uh, 001. Once cross the 001 and read 001 radial, that is on the 001 radial from the VOR, it's going to descend. He knows that it can descend to 4000 and so on. So then once it's going to go down to 4000, it will keep checking the radials. And once it crosses the radial 028, it's going to turn right in order to leave the DME arc. So I hope this is a clear example and we can move on to check another example. So here we've got an approach chart. This is a chart that basically um, uh, allows the pilot to, uh, to land the plane and uh, basically from, the, from a point all the way down to, land, to the landing. As you can see here, here, we've got another arc, okay? In this case, the arc is a distance 15 from Bravo Echo Golf DME. Where is Bravo Echo Golf? So if we go in, inside, you will find out this is Bravo Echo Golf 114 decimal 95. And if you follow this line here, we can find out that this is the, the, the station. Okay, so the DME is co-located with the airport because if you look here, we've got this black rectangular and that is the airport. Okay, so again, we've got another DME which is co-located with the airport. In this case, this arc allows the pilot to to start the procedure from this point here, and if we follow the black line, we find out this L bot called. It's gonna from here we can fly all the way down to the landing. Okay, following this DME arc. How does the pilot do that? Basically, from L bot, which is located at 17 nautical miles from Bravo Echo Golf. Okay, so once the, the pilot comes here and reads 17 nautical miles, it's gonna turn right here and join the 15 DME arc from. B Bravo Eco Golf, and then what happened is that he, the minimum altitude is 6000, as we discussed earlier. Then, once he arrived at Badix, which is another waypoint here, another waypoint, okay, Badix, how, how can the pilot find out when he's over Badix? Basically, if you keep 15 nautical miles arc constant and he reads that he's on radial 136 from, the, from this station here, okay, once he reads that he's on radial 136 at 15 nautical miles arc, is over Badix. So he knows that from 6,000 he can go down to 5,000. Then once he crosses the radial 126, he can go down to 3,500 and then he can actually uh, join the radial uh, 108 uh, inbound in, or in order to land. So this is another example of a DME arc and waypoint identifications using the DME distance and the radials from the station. Okay, so I hope this is clear because it's extremely important on the, on the DME to know exactly which radial you are because the, on the DME arc, the radius looks like, uh, functions as a distance information because if, if you are here, for example, in this radial here, which is the 157, you go 157, 156, 155, 154, 153, 140, and so on, and 136. So if you have a radial and a distance information, you've got a two pieces of information that gives you exactly where you are located along the DME arc. Okay, so this is the part that we analyzed before. That means that once we leave the arc, we go inbound here, for example, this is 13 nautical miles point from Bravo Eco Golf, which is co-located with this. And as you can see, the pilots will arrive at 3,500 feet, turn left and join the final approach. 
and that's exactly the same altitude restrictions because we came from here 3,400 feet minimum and that's the minimum as well okay so then once we arrive at 13 nautical miles we wait until we read 13 nautical miles and then we know that we can descend down to 2,100 feet so from 13 nautical miles to 10 nautical miles and as you can see this is uh, depicted here as well so 13 nautical miles here 10 nautical miles here and then the next point is 7 nautical miles which is exactly co-located here okay and then from there we can go down to the to the to the, uh, to, the to the airport basically looking at the puppies and make sure make sure we, we see the runway and the point of refer of the of reference that are required in order to continue the approach so as well here we've got a 5 nautical miles point and we've got a 5 nautical miles point now i want you to make sure I want you to be focused on this point here, this this cross here, okay? This is very important point. It, this is called FAF and is exactly the point where the pilots has to make sure that their altitude is exactly the same as required. So in this case, seven nautical miles, we've got this cross here and the minimum altitude is 2,800 feet. So as you can see here, we've got this cross here, 2,800 feet. If we want to be very precise and we check here, 7 nautical miles is actually 2,820 feet, okay? So, what happened at 7 nautical miles? That's the pilot has to make sure that a 7 nautical miles is actually at 2,820 feet because that means that it is right on profile, okay? You, that's really the most important point in the wall procedure, okay? So, why is this so important? Because from here, from the 7 nautical miles, from the FAF, the we're gonna start really the, the last part of the approach. So it's paramount that the, airplane, that the airplane starts the final part of the approach at the right altitude. Okay, so we analyze this, this plate here as well, which is the approach chart, and let's ana analyze another example of chart. As you can see here, we've got this SID, and the D means departure. So this is standard instrumental departure. And this is the procedure that the pilot has to follow when flies in IFR in order to leave the airport and join the route phase or cruise phase, as you want to call it. So again, if you look at the center of the picture, we've got the, the runway, which is the rectangular black, uh, the black rectangular. And then we've got this frequency here, 16.25, as we see earlier, is the Charlie Tango Fox or DME. So what happened here is that if you look here, we've got another DME arc based on Charlie Tango Foxtrot. So this is the reference, okay, and this is the arc for a departure. So let's say an aircraft wants to fly here, okay, he has to fly like this all the way down, then join this 21 nautical miles Charlie Tango Foxtrot arc, and then uh, fly inbound a Ludu, which is the point in there. So how the pilot will do that? He's gonna take off following this 077 radial, all the way down to 19, 19 nautical miles Charlie Tango Fox, which is a DME. So he will find out that his ear by reading the DME distance from his DME indicator board. Once he passed this DME, uh, 19 DME uh, Charlie Tango Fox, he's gonna turn right in order to follow the arc of uh, 21 nautical miles Charlie Tango Fox, and then fly all the way down here, and, and he will cross check constantly the radial which is in. So. In this case, it's going to be on the radial 077. Once it starts here, since the radial starts here, it's going to be on the radial 078, 079, 90, and so on. When he's going to read that is on the radial 117 and at a distance of 21 nautical miles, this is the leaving radial. It will turn left and intercept the radial 124 from the VOR in order to fly inbound Aludu. How is going to know when he is overflying a Ludu? Well, again, it's the same principle. He knows that he's on the radar 124, he reads the 31 nautical mile Charlie Tango Fox, and then he knows exactly that he's over a Ludu. And that's how he will find out that he's actually using the DME and the radial where there is exact position and he knows that it's over a Ludu. We have as well here, as you can see, a flight level 100 is a minimum altitude because the line below this indicates that you can be above that, but not below. So, I hope you really, uh, I hope my, my, my video for today was clear for you and helpful for you. If you have any question, leave a comment below and I will answer you out. 
If you want to have more, uh, if you want to be notified when I put out a new videos, which I'm planning to do one video per day, just sub sub subscribe, hit the bell button. And if you want to have more pilot, uh, free pilot content, go to pilotcrime.com and there you will find uh, a lot of useful information. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one.